This is the American dream, right? Wherever you are, whoever you are, with certain limitations, you can rise as far as your talents will take you in the United States. And so Matthew Carey becomes this great exemplar of this American tradition. He's the person who's really taken over the mantle of uh, printing and publication from the great Ben Franklin and he sets up shop in Philadelphia. No matter where he is, if he's in Baltimore, if he's outside of Philadelphia, when this great epidemic hits the city that has really become a part of his life and identity, he's gonna come back and report on it. And he also thinks of himself as a chronicler. He's someone who publishes news from around the world that will become the proverbial first draft of history. He wields a lot of power through the columns that he prints. Because on the one hand, Kerry does salute black leaders like Richard Allen and Absalom Jones, who rendered, in his eyes, terrific service to the city of Philadelphia during this terrible disease. I think it also comes naturally to people like Kerry, uh, the sense of black inequality across the board, the threats that blacks might create in the young republic. He's really worried about people undermining democracy and civic health, and African Americans outside of black leaders, to him, represent some of these possibilities. And I'm not even sure if Kerry is fully conscious of all of his prejudices. And so he has to come back and correct the record. No, no, I didn't say that all African Americans were thieves and plunderers. I just said certain types of people, certain classes. But this isn't good enough for Allen. Allen says it doesn't matter how you divide you're still saying that certain sections of the African-American population are predisposed to this, or you're suggesting that. Matthew Carey becomes this great exemplar of this American tradition. You can rise in far society as your ambitions and talents will take you.